Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me borrow the car in this video. Toyota of Naperville is one of the largest Toyota dealers in Illinois, ready to find the right car for you. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2021 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this Jeep Wrangler for two reasons. First of all, it's a two door. I haven't driven a modern two door at all, I think. I've driven the old TJs and YJs and things like that, but never a JL in two door. So I'm excited to share that experience with you. But also the more important reason is the fact that this is equipped with the two liter turbo four cylinder. So I'll be sharing a lot of thoughts on the shorter wheelbase and that engine up front. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPrandle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you get a video of your car, just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that two liter turbo under the hood. Well, it's actually one of a few drivetrain setups offered here in the Wrangler. Not only can you get, of course, the standard 3.6 liter that they've been using forever, it's also a four cylinder diesel, and of course the 4XE now, which is a plug-in hybrid, and I'll leave my review of that Jeep Wrangler at the end of this video. Oh, and I totally forgot, there's also a V8 option in the four door. I forgot that they even offered that. I have yet to drive one. So why would you opt for the 2.0 liter? Well, it does have some benefits. First of all, it makes 15 less horsepower than the 3.6 liter. This one makes 270 horsepower. However, it actually makes more torque than the 3.6 liter. This makes 295 foot-pounds of torque, where the standard 3.6 only makes 260. So that's 35 more foot-pounds of torque out of the 2-liter turbo. The other advantage is going to be in city driving. City MPG for this is 21 miles to the gallon, while highway is 23 miles to the gallon. Now, the V6 is going to have better highway mileage at 25 miles to the gallon on the highway but drops dramatically for city driving at only 17 miles to the gallon so if you're going to be doing a lot of city driving not many road trips going to and from work i would highly recommend seeking out the two liter turbo but putting all of those crazy numbers aside I'm not very much of a numbers person. I'm more of an experienced person. So let's line it up here. I don't believe I have any type of sport mode. If I do, I can't find it and we're not using it. So just gonna put my foot down. Let's see what the two liter turbo can do. Not bad, it does definitely take a second to spool. And you're gonna notice that with the V6, the V6 has the power right away. This has to work for it a little bit. And it does sound kind of like a modified tuner car as opposed to a Jeep. It's not a Jeep sound, which is interesting, but it definitely delivers that power. You're not going to feel a deficit when you put your foot into it on a highway on-ramp. Passing someone in traffic is going to be just as easy with the V6 as it is with this inline four. So no worries there. And if we want to be honest, the original Jeep that won World War II also had a four cylinder. So this is a little bit more true to the brand than you might think. Like I said, paired to it, automatic transmission. You can also option these with a six speed manual if that's something you would like, but this does not have that. It's fine. The trans is fine. It's the same one they've been using forever and it does the job. Last but not least, of course, every single Jeep Wrangler is four wheel drive. So how does the Wrangler drive? Uh, pretty terrible actually. However, it should be noted that this is on aftermarket wheels and tires, and I don't know what else has been done to it. But with this setup that I am driving, this car handles very, very poorly. Not only does the suspension feel like a brick, and I feel every vertebrae compressing in my back, but the tires and wheels are too large, and so trying to drive it straight down the road has some pretty serious steering input. Look at how I'm driving this straight, and I'm not exaggerating it. 
just to keep it straight you got to move it because they're slopping the wheel. So you kind of have to over-exaggerate your movements. But then that sort of overdoes things, overclocks it. It's a handful. If you want a Jeep, but you're just going to drive it on the road, please get a Cherokee. Please get a Liberty or even a Renegade. They're going to drive on the road a lot better than any Wrangler, stock wheels or not. And this, with the extra added wheels, the larger wheels, just amplifies the worst parts of the ride. I've never been a big fan of Jeeps on road, but you should take into consideration that Jeeps off road don't really have much competition. They are the end all be all rig for going off roading. So, it is a trade-off. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two physical gauges and a screen. Off to the left, I do have a tachometer, and off to the right, I have the speedometer. In the center, I do get a little information gauge. Mopar, Stellantis, whatever you want to call them these days, they do a fantastic job with these screens. They always look super interesting. They have fun little details and Easter eggs in them. And I overall just like how many colors and how high resolution the screen is. Feels a lot nicer than other screens that have fewer colors. So that is a big, big perk of the Stellantis family. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my selectors for that gauge cluster screen, as well as my phone options. And off to the right, I have cruise control, just standard cruise control. It doesn't get any sort of lane keep assist or adaptive cruise, which for the Jeep market fits right in. The overall look and feel of the steering wheel is pretty nice. Has some red leather stitching on it, which I quite like. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent as well as my headlight switches and gauge dimmer switches. And then moving on to the door, we have the power locks up against the door. Of course, these doors are removable, so they try to limit the amount of electronics that are on the door in case you drop it in your garage or store it wrong or whatever that might be. Moving into the center, we do have a little infotainment system. Now I can run my climate controls through this screen. However, I also do have physical buttons, which I love. So we'll talk about that with the climate controls later. It's a kind of a small screen. I kind of would have liked to have seen something a little bit bigger, especially in modern vehicles. And to be fair, I have a Toyota Sequoia press card this week. Look at this screen. And then look at this. So there was a slight contrast this morning for me. However, I'm not expecting the Jeep Wrangler to have a screen that large. Just pointing out why I say it looks small. It's all about perspective. Life is about perspective. Here is the backup camera. The lines do not adjust, which I would have liked to have seen, but that's okay. And I do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and that's pretty much it. Down below that, we get our physical climate controls. So like I said, you can use the screen for the climate, but they still leave you with physical ones. This is awesome because I hate it when cars just rely on the screen for the climate controls. I don't want to select different menus in order to change the temperature. I like having physical buttons. So this really truly is the best of both worlds. And I wish more companies did this where they have both as an option. Love that. But the actual climate controls, I do get dual zone as well as I get automatic heated seats, heated steering wheel. And down below that, we get the automatic start stop, traction control, hill descent control, screen off and mute. Then we have more buttons moving down the center console. Off to the left is a 12 volt outlet that will only work when the vehicle is on. That's what that key logo is. If it had a battery logo, it would work when the vehicle is on or off. Then we have our window switches. So this is where they're found in Jeeps. They're found in the middle. Again, like I said, to cut down on the amount of electronics in the door. And off to the right, we have our media center for two different USBs, USB-C and USB-A and then the aux cord as well. Then we have even more buttons. So off to the left, we have our front and rear locking differentials. Love that. We also have off-road plus mode, and we have electronic sway bars. Then we have four auxiliary buttons. This is for hooking up whatever you want to hook up. And I love that Jeep offers this because they know that people are going to modify them and gosh darn it if they're not right. So you can hook up your lights or your winch or whatever to these buttons. It looks flush. It looks nice and presentable. And I love that. Then moving down to the center console, off to the left, I do have my four wheel drive settings. So of course, two high, four high, neutral, and four low. And then we have the shifter off to the right. I like that they put the old Willys Jeep on the shift knob. Love that little touch. And then we have the handbrake to the left and cup holders to the right. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Jeep Wrangler. And I am unhappy to report that unfortunately, the Wrangler Rubicon two door 
fails the big freaking bottle test. <laughs> then I do get a center console, dual opening, so the top opens for a little compartment, bottom opens for a bigger compartment, and you'll find a USB-A in the center console. The seats are decent. They are this cloth material, fabric. However, they do have red stitching. They say Rubicon. They have a fun little design to them. And like I said, they are heated. So I am definitely not complaining on this 28 degree morning. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats, even though this is a two door. So let's go do a back seat review. All right. I already hate getting in the back of coops. That's not right. Pull this. Oh, that's but Jeep Wranglers are like the king of the worst coupes to get into because you have a, a height issue too. Ah, ah. Oh my God. Ow, okay, I really hurt my wrist doing that. So we're in the back of the Jeep Wrangler. Once you're back here, Seats are not that bad, but getting back here is a struggle. I would much rather drive to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan than try to get back here. I do have vents, which is very, very nice, and a lot of coupes don't give vents to the back seat. You don't really use the back seat all that much, but Jeep Wrangler, of course, does. I can also enjoy, once the top is off, I mean, sitting in the back seat of a Jeep Wrangler with the top off is one of the best feelings in the world. I don't have anything over here to really look at. I get the speakers right in my face and I get some lights. But other than that, the experience back here is good. It's fine. It works. But getting in and out is a pain and it's almost not even worth it. Honestly, take this off in the summer and then get in by jumping on the tire and getting in. That's probably the easier way. Let's go hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Little handle here open it up like a door and then you can lift this glass up and that is your rear cargo space in the two door you don't really get much that is going to be the big advantage of going with the four door but we do have a 12 volt outlet over here with the battery logo on it meaning that'll run all the time so even if the car is off you can inflate your inflatable mattress you can get power which is really really nice other than that nothing too crazy over here it says trail rail ready you have some cool diagrams of the JL two-door, four-door water fording, where it was built. I guess this one has been to the Colorado Rockies as well, which is a cool little touch a previous owner did. But bring this top down like that. Nice feature of the hard top and close the door and you're good to go. Now we gotta talk about the looks and you can't deny that the Jeep Wrangler looks good, especially with these added parts to it, the added wheels, the black on the hood, the fins, but let's do a walk around. I think it's actually a pretty handsome vehicle and I've always liked the way that Jeeps look. Are they a little played out? Yes, and that's where modification really starts to come in is that everyone wants to be unique Everyone who buys a Wrangler wants it to be a little special, a little different, because there's so many of them. They sell over 200,000 of these a year, so you got to stick out somehow. So that's where you see the big wheels, big tires, added paint jobs, lights, rock guards, things like that. Speaking of customization, not that this particularly coincides with the exterior, but I found this very interesting. This is the key. So I had to reach out to Mike from Jeeps on the Run, which you should definitely check out Jeeps on the Run, to ask if he had ever seen a key like this. And he told me that this is an aftermarket company that actually does this. You send them your key, they take the guts out of it and put it into a different case. Why a key needed to be customized, I don't know. It's like bedazzling a refrigerator handle. But the previous owner of this vehicle did that. And I thought that was kind of interesting and something I had never seen before in my over 1,000 reviews here on YouTube. With all that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a 2021 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon? Well, the driving experience isn't great. Like I said, if you're going to only do on-road driving, I would highly recommend seeking out another Jeep product. But for an on-road car, this just doesn't really cut the mustard. Can you make it work? Yes. But it's the argument of putting up with something versus loving something. I can put up with driving a Jeep Wrangler on the street until the day's end, but I won't love it. However, let's talk about the reason I wanted to film this. The two liter turbo. Is it an adequate engine? Yes. Is it a good option? 
yes. Especially if you are going to do city driving, the two liter turbo seems to make a little bit more sense, at least economically. It does add a kind of fun liveliness to the driving experience because down low, you're not making any power. You kind of have to work for it a little bit where the archaic, the ancient 3.6 liter that you can also get in these just feels like a boat anchor these days. Back in its day, it was great, but it hit its prime in 2006 and hasn't changed since. Well, the two liter turbo is kind of the new kid on the block. It's fun, it's light. <laughs> Ugh, okay, I don't want to roll this thing because that is a very, very real possibility. But once we get in a straight line, I'll let you hear the little pig oink. <laughs> oh man, and you do notice the four cylinder on cold starts and with the exhaust note. Here's when I cold started it before this video, just to give you a reference of what it sounded like. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. When I saw it was the two liter turbo, I knew I had to drive it. They have been absolutely awesome. They have tons of cool and interesting vehicles on the lot. Toyota of Naperville is absolutely awesome and I can't thank them enough. Please go check them out with the information up on the screen or linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. Thank you.